Hello, Brian Lynch here. It's October 25th, 2014, out here at the orchard. And it has been far too long since I have given an update on the pawpaw project. And as you can see, it's uh, autumn now, and the pawpaws have this absolutely wonderful uh, yellow color to them as they uh, lose their leaves. Uh, but this is my uh, grafting pawpaw patch. Uh, all the uh, pawpaws you can see that have the marking tape, uh, red or blue, uh, those are the ones that uh, have been grafted over, and uh, not only are those the ones that have been grafted over, those are the ones that have been successfully grafted over, as I went through and have removed all the uh, marking tape and uh, name tags from the unsuccessful grafts. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a, a fairly large number of uh, successfully grafted trees, uh, just based on the number of uh, mark the amount of marking tape. and. Uh, I would say that uh, about now I probably have between 15 and 20 varieties of pawpaws, so I'm pretty happy about that. One area of the pawpaw project that uh, turned out to be a uh, almost complete failure uh, was uh, the attempt to grow pawpaws from seeds. Uh, this is the uh, bed of pawpaws that I uh, planted out here at the orchard a, uh, a while ago in these very tiny uh, cups, one pawpaw seed, or maybe it was even more than one pawpaw seed per cup. And uh, I tried to grow them out, and uh, as you can see, this uh, the bed has turned into a, just a bunch of weeds, a couple trees have sprouted. Uh, none of those trees, unfortunately, are uh, pawpaws. A couple of pawpaws did sprout, but uh, unfortunately they, uh, they all died. This is an area that uh, I think in 2012 I showed a bunch of pawpaws with boxes in it. Uh, I believe that big stump over there uh, may have been shown in that particular video. Uh, it's still very much here. Anyways, uh, I, the reason I was putting boxes on those uh, pawpaws was to uh, decrease the amount of light that was hitting them uh, so that they would need a little bit less water and uh, the thought was that uh, that would help them survive the, uh, the drought that Indiana was going through. Uh, it was one of the worst uh, droughts in 50 or 100 years. Uh, uh, I think that's what the local news said. Anyways, uh, long story short is that at the end of the season, I basically thought that all of the pawpaws in this area had died. And uh, for 2013 and even for the better part of 2014, I basically just ignored this area and uh, it went pretty much fallow. Until I uh, started trimming around this area and realized that actually a couple pawpaws had survived and uh, some of them uh, are actually doing pretty well. Uh, out of all the name varieties that I planted, there are now currently three pawpaws. There's one right there. Its leaves are brown, but that's only because it's autumn right now. So three pawpaws out of the uh, all those uh, pawpaws that I had previously planted, all the uh, name varieties that I gotten from the uh, the nurseries, uh, they uh, some of them were you know three out of however many I planted uh, survived. Unfortunately, uh, I don't believe they have their name tags on them, and while I'm absolutely certain that I made a map of the locations of the pawpaws, probably more than one or two, uh, I probably ended up throwing away that particular map uh, at the end of 2012 when I thought every single one of them was dead. There is one, uh, luckily, the uh, Burnt Ridge Nursery Taylor pawpaw is actually doing pretty well, and uh, you can see its leaves right there. Uh, it is, uh, I know what variety it is, so uh, I do know a, uh, at least I have a tailor. In uh, 2013, I purchased either 200 or 300 pawpaws from the Indiana State Nursery. And the first year I had them, I planted them in paper pots out at my house. Uh, but this year, in the spring of 2014, I transplanted these pawpaws out here to the orchard, uh, the ones that were still alive. And uh, here's an example of one of those pawpaws. Uh, you can see right down here the remnants of the uh, tar paper pot that is slowly decomposing. 
And in fact, uh, you'll notice, if you look very carefully, that I planted one, two, and then I believe a third one back over here. Uh, three papered potted uh, pawpaw trees for each location. And I did this mainly because, well, first, I was, I'm starting to run out of space on the level ground, and uh, uh, I don't want to plant the pawpaws on the uh, steep portion of the uh, orchard, just because uh, I'm planting them at uh, more dense spacing than the uh, pear or apricot trees, and that would just be a lot of work. And uh, second uh, point is that I wasn't sure what uh, the, uh, the kill-off rate would be for the pawpaws that were transplanted. And as you can see in this one, I planted three different pawpaws. One, two, three. And uh, actually all three of them survived in this one, so that's uh, uh, pretty good. But uh, I would say that on average, I probably had maybe 30 to 50% uh, success rate for uh, each pawpaw. But since I was planting them three per hole, uh, I ended up with having a, a very good success rate overall. Here's another pawpaw over here that uh, just needs to have some of the uh, weeds taken out from around it. Uh, this one looks like uh, two out of the three survived, so that's uh, not too bad. Uh, so while the uh, planting of the pawpaws in the paper pots and then into the uh, ground out here was uh, fairly successful, if I were to do it again, I would probably simply order a larger quantity of pawpaws from the Indiana State Nursery and just directly plant them into the ground uh, with numerous per hole and with the expectation that a good number of them probably will die, but uh, that's okay since I would need a, uh, a large number to die anyways because there can only be one per hole or one per small area anyways.